Good morning, everybody. It's very, uh, very pleasing to see such a, such a great turnout for this symposium. Um, I see people from a number of the ministries of health and partners, and, uh, and it's, it's great because I think that's exactly what we were hoping to be able to do with this uh, couple of days, was to um, provide a forum for, well, for us as Malaria Consortium to share uh, uh, information on the programs that we've been working on but also to hear from a number of partners as well as the national programs and really have a, a good opportunity for some communications, um, see what we can learn from the work that's been uh, uh, done already and then also particularly to look at opportunities for further work, further collaboration, really trying to think through a bit further on some of the the gaps in the knowledge that we have or the ways that we work, which uh, are important at, at what's really a very critical time in this region. Um, as, as many of you know uh, very well, there are a lot of uh, key challenges in malaria control uh, as well as opportunities at the moment. And we just thought uh, it, would be, it would be great to have an opportunity to, to really take stock of what's being done find out if we can identify areas that are being really neglected and so on. So that, that's the, the general rationale for this meeting. Um, as you know, uh, the, there's great interest in this region at the moment uh, for a number of reasons and many new partners are engaging. And we felt that sometimes the information that's being learnt across the region uh, can get lost over time as, as new people come. And we wanted a, a way of just uh, taking stock of all the information that's already there. Um, we also wanted to emphasize the importance of bringing together the national programs together with uh, um, research partners and other groups to, to really kind of blend the, the science and the implementation. S several of the challenges we have in malaria control at the moment are this kind of um, need to, uh, to get a good balance of doing what works best, but also doing it properly. And so we thought that so this was a good opportunity for programs to, um, to, be, to have a chance to question the researchers and the, and the partners in some detail about the ideas that, that they, they have as well. Um, and uh, we hope that that, 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 that will work. Um, in terms of the style of this meeting, um, we're, we're keen for this to be quite an informal meeting. Um, there are a number of meetings in the region, some people might say there are too many meetings, and, um, and this is another one, but the idea with this one is really to have an opportunity to, to think uh, freely about some of the big issues that are facing malaria control at the moment. And um, so, so the more informal the better, feel free when people are presenting to interrupt with questions. We will have question sessions after each uh, group of presentations, but if there's something that you really want to talk about in the midst, uh, don't feel inhibited about that. Um, and try and use this style of meeting to, to reach a new level of working together, stimulating new ideas. There's a bit of a feeling, I think, that despite everything we try to do to control uh, and move towards elimination in the area, there are some real big uh, barriers. And sometimes having meetings like this can help to find ways of, of really um, trying to break those down, getting people working together effectively. Um, now, you've seen the uh, objectives of the meeting on the first page of the agenda that you received, and I think I've covered the, uh, the key areas in that, the communications, the identification of gaps, the sharing of information. Um, now, a lot of it is, uh, is around the three big issues that face malaria in this region. The first, of course, is the, 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 the very big one of artemisinin resistance. Um, now, it's, uh, it's been, I guess, about five, six, six years that uh, the countries in the region have been uh, fighting artemisinin resistance following its um, identification. Um, and during that time, and, and you'll see a lot of data on this, uh, 
uh, a lot has been achieved. Malaria has gone down uh, very, very fast in, some, in several of the areas where resistance is a problem. At the same time, the, uh, the proportion of resistant parasites is going up. We've, we're hearing reports of resistance in more countries. And so, um, so there's still a huge amount to do. So the idea of how to move to the next step within that is, is something we'd like to explore in more depth. Uh, now, together with artemisinin resistance, there's the uh, pre preparations for malaria elimination in the countries of the Greater Mekong subregion. Um, the country, uh, different countries are at different stages in their pre-elimination planning. Um, fortunately, the, the strategies for res uh, elimination of uh, resistant falciparum are very similar to the strategies for elimination of malaria altogether. So the two are reinforcing each other. I think a lot has been learned from the artemisinin resistance containment efforts which will, uh, which will help us to move more quickly and perhaps with a greater sense of urgency uh, in terms of broader elimination. Although of course we do have the additional challenges uh, with elimination of trying to tackle Plasmodium vivax and that brings in some other ideas on strategies. Um, I thought the third big issue that would be worth keeping in mind while we're having our discussions is, uh, is the, the, the strategies and the challenges of reaching the, the most hard to reach people in this region. And this is partly the mobile and migrant populations which we'll be talking about quite a lot and, and which have had quite a bit of attention during the, um, the recent years uh, in relation particularly to artemisinin resistance. But it's not just the mobile and migrant populations. There are also the, the more isolated static populations that in many ways will become the areas where elimination is, is hardest to achieve. And there's, uh, there's perhaps a lot more we should be doing when we think about those populations and how to ensure access to good health services for them. Um, as everyone knows, there are a number of uh, quite controversial issues in this region when it comes to uh, tackling malaria. And they come up again, they, 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 they sometimes make it very difficult to make, uh, make progress. Uh, some of this is about arguing on what are the best strategies, and that's quite a, a healthy controversy and, and allows stimulating a lot of new ideas, but then trying to maintain the, the pace of action is going to be very important there. Others, the, the constant challenges of maintaining enough funding and enough um, political commitment to, to really uh, keep going at the pace that's needed uh, are much more intractable issues to address. Um, and I think it is going to be the one thing that's, that's critical to the next few years is not losing the momentum that has already been achieved. I think the countries in this region have done an amazing amount and achieved a huge amount in the last few years. But it's very fragile. It could easily be that if, uh, if, if people lose interest or start losing attention that, that we could go back to where we started 10 years from now. And the time, the time is limited because of the uh, issues of artemisinin and resistance. So I'm not going to um, say much more at this stage. You'll hear much more interesting sessions over the next few days. Um, you'll have seen from the agenda that uh, we've arranged the presentations around key themes uh, which are of great interest in the region. So the ones today are uh, monitoring and evaluation and surveillance. Uh, followed by a series of presentations on migrants and mobile populations. And then uh, there's two sessions in parallel, one on vector control and one on malaria and pregnancy. Uh, so that's today. And then tomorrow we'll be hearing more from the national malaria programs, as well as discussing some of the new tools for resistance uh, response and uh, elimination and also behavior uh, change communications. Um, so, so all those areas will be, will be covered. I want to say thank you particularly to the Cambodian government for letting us uh, host this meeting here uh, in collaboration with them. And I hope people have a bit of chance in the evenings to those of you who don't know Cambodia so well to have a look around the town. 
Um, and also a big thanks to all the uh, other national programs from uh, countries in the Greater Mekong subregion. There's a great attendance, and that's really important for this meeting. Um, we're, we haven't had a, a meeting quite like this before, and it's a bit experimental. We're hoping that this opportunity to share um, learning across different organizations um, in this kind of informal setting will be uh, will lead to new ideas coming out, but also if it uh, if it works well, we may think should we do this uh, as an annual event because there's so much uh, progress these days in malaria, and it's uh, it's important not to lose what's already being learned. So um, so so let's see how it goes and see if we should think of doing this on a more regular basis. Uh, so on that note, I think um, now we're ready for coffee, which is nice. Um, and uh, during coffee break, as, as Fiona mentioned, we have a number of posters from different uh, programs uh, in the region. So do, do take an opportunity to have a look at those. And we'll, uh, we'll reconvene after coffee at uh, 9.30 for the first session on monitoring, evaluation and surveillance. Thanks very much.